Welcome back to Soul Shift. It's me, Danny, and I'm so excited that you're here listening today or watching if you're watching me on YouTube. If you are watching me on YouTube, exciting news. My husband and I have been getting the office all squared away to kind of turn this into still going to be the office, but more of a recording space. So I've kind of got this whole area that's in front of me prepped. It's like a gallery wall. It has the neon lights and everything. It's ready. But my desk is facing that wall instead of it being behind me. So we're trying to shift from like my workstation to my recording station. So stay tuned for that. That's exciting. Um, but today's episode is about a topic that has been on my mind a lot lately because I have experienced this over the last three years. It has become a bigger part of my life. And I think it's something that a lot of us deal with, especially adult females, which is friendship loss in adulthood. It's tough, right? One moment you're like inseparable, your best friends. And then the next, it feels like you're just strangers. Like you never knew each other. You never had this wonderful friendship. You never shared all these crazy moments and you're just strangers walking by each other. So we're here to unpack all of that. And hopefully offer some insights <laughs> into how to deal with it and cope. And I hope you keep on listening. So let's start off by acknowledging that friendships can change as we grow older. And they probably should. Like everything else in life, they evolve. We're not the same people we were in high school. I'm definitely not. We're not the same people we were in college. And neither are our friends. Sometimes these changes bring us close together. And other times, oftentimes, they create distance. And it's natural, but it still stings. When it first happens, it just feels like something's wrong. Like you've just lost a piece of yourself. I remember a time when my best friend in college and I, we were inseparable. We did everything together. We talked about everything, any drama, like I was there for it. She was there for mine. Uh, dates, everything. She just, she was my main person and we were inseparable, but life happened and it's still happening. And we have been slowly drifting apart. I, there really is no relationship anymore. We're just acquaintances at this point. And it's hard, it's tough, but I know that it's natural, but it's very, very <laughs> difficult when you think about it. Like how did someone who I spent all this time with that I talked to you about everything. How did this happen? It's, it's, it blows my mind when I really think about how deep that relationship was. And now it's just really non-existent. Not to mention work friends. Like I mentioned before, I am a former elementary school teacher and some of my very, very best friends I met as a teacher, my teacher friends were my best friends. You could not tell me we would not be friends until we died. But when I left my role as a teacher, I lost my friends, essentially. They rarely respond to messages. I can't even tell you if some of them have the same phone number. I can't even tell you what building some of them work at at this point, which is crazy. I have no idea. I just randomly see them sometimes on social media, but no relationship. I invite them sometimes to my events. They don't even respond, not even to decline, not even to say, hey, can't make it. They just don't say a thing. They'll like my things here and there. They might put a little comment here and there or like a happy birthday, but there is no relationship. And it's the weirdest thing because nothing happened. Nothing went wrong. All that changed is they don't see me every day. So it really makes me wonder, like, what was the value of that relationship? Was there actually a relationship in the first place? Because all you did was not see me every day. We'll get to it later. But my best friend that I've had since kindergarten, we went like three years without seeing each other. And the second I saw her or if I text her, it was like nothing ever changed. That's a story for later. But I'm sure we've all been there. The moment where you realize that you're once rock solid, or at least it seemed rock solid friendship, is falling apart. Maybe life got busy, priority shifted, or there could have been a misunderstanding that snowballed. I will say my distances, I as far as I know, 
were not caused by misunderstanding. But whatever the reason, it does get tough. To transition from best friends to strangers is just challenging. But I do believe now that it is an opportunity for growth. One thing that I have learned is the importance of communication. If you feel a friendship drifting and shifting, it's okay to have an honest conversation about it. Express how you feel. Don't blame, don't judge. Just talk things out and get some clarity and some understanding. Even if the end result, the end understanding is that y'all don't mesh anymore. Y'all just are not made to be friends anymore. Who you are now as adults does not work as friends anymore. You know, that's okay. Now, if they don't want to have the conversation with you, you tried. Nothing you can do. But losing a friend, it hurts, it sucks. And it's okay to grieve that, to feel angry, to feel sad and confused. That's all right. I feel like a friendship breakup can be just as painful, if not more, as a romantic breakup. Because some of those friends were there during those relationships. They were there for those deep, hard moments. And I think it hurts because we don't talk about the friendship breakups that openly. I think as adults, we try to pretend that friendships don't matter so much. If someone doesn't like you or they aren't as close to you anymore, who cares? You're an adult. And I think that's just BS. I call BS. I think it matters. And I think to some extent, we all care about that. Like, yes, as an adult, friendships from years ago is not the end, like, it's not the end all be all. It's not the main focus in your life. But it still matters. It's still weird when all of a sudden it's not there anymore. I don't think we have to be these super strong, bold adults to act like you don't care. You've got bigger things going on in life. It's still a part of life and it still sucks. Something else that I believe is that life is so full of opportunities to connect with like-minded people. Since I have left teaching, I've traveled more in my new role and I have met some people that I never would have met if I stayed in my same bubble, if I stayed with that same group of people all of the time who are like-minded, who think like me. We can't be afraid to step outside of our comfort zone and explore new friendships. My daughter being in dance has allowed me to meet a new friend group. We have things in common and the ladies that I've gelled with are a lot of fun. Um, There are three moms that I really, really love and I would have never met them if I just stayed in my car and didn't try to interact with the other moms there, but I'm glad I did. She's about to start school. I might meet some more moms. Who knows? Who knows? And I wouldn't have this opportunity if I just wrote off adult friends forever because of a few bad endings. I have been fortunate to cultivate a very, very close and very small group of friends who are more than just like a circle to me. They are, I would consider my soulmates. Like my husband is my soulmate. He is my very best friend out of all the friends. But these are my girls. They are my people. When you don't go to husband, when it's not time for husband time, and you need your group, your girls, these are my people. They have been through my by my side through thick and thin, and their presence in my life is a blessing. I can trust them. I can count on them. I know that, you know, no matter what life does, whether I move away, whether I stay here, whether I get a new job, if I have a kid, if I have to, you know, be by myself for a while and just get my life together, I know that they will be there. Now, granted, two out of the three of them are my cousins. But let's not act like family can't be a disaster as well, right? So to have two cousins that you love to be your friends, because some family's just family. Like I just see you at the holidays. I don't want to do anything extra with you. And I have those two. But these two are more than just my cousins. They are my people. I love them. I love them deep. I have family like that, that I don't even recognize them anymore. I don't even know who they are. We've drifted apart. We have changed. <laughs> But these two, who is my cousin Kelsey, who is my sandbox, I think she is the first person I remember being friends with in life. Of my first family member that I met and I was like, oh, I like you. I think I met her when she she was a baby, my first picture with her. 
an infant. My sandbox person, that's Kelsey, and my cousin Joy. I trust them. I think I've got those two until the grave, you know? And my third is my best friend since kindergarten. So 27 years of friendship. These three, they're like my core. I've had them for years and years and years. Heather is my bestie. I met her in kindergarten, first day of school, 27 years of friendship. She just got married last month and I was able to stand by her side in her wedding as her maid of honor. Best friend. We have been states apart. Heather and I went to elementary school, middle school, and high school together. We went to community college for a year together. And um, we rode to school together every day for community college for that year. And then I left community college and went to university. She still stayed at the community college for a while. Nothing changed. She was still my friend. I didn't see her every day. I didn't talk to her every day, but she was still there. Then Heather went to university in Florida and she was gone. I think, I think she went to North Carolina and then Florida, but she was gone for a long time. And during that time I got married and we didn't know if Heather could be there because of her school and assessments and flights. Like I got married in September, like she's doing stuff. So we didn't know what the situation was. We knew she probably couldn't be in the wedding, but I just wanted her to be there. So we weren't sure. I knew that if Heather's coming, she's going to be at the family table, reserve it for her, let her be there. That's her spot. Heather, this is this is my friend, y'all. I had not seen her in at least a year at this point. We did not talk every day. This girl leaves class, leaves like a lab because she was in marine bio. She's in her bathing suit. She's wet. She's getting on this plane like this to make my wedding. To get off the plane, change in and then come. That's, 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 that's a friend. It didn't matter that she hadn't seen me. She made away. It was my wedding. She was there and she was there. I looked up and I was like, Heather's here. She was at the table with my parents, got a picture. She's loyal. She's loyal. And she shows up. She's locked in. My daughter calls her auntie Heather. She shows up for my kid. Heather does not have children. Heather does not want to have children, but she treats my child like hers. My daughter's birthday party was this past weekend. Guess who showed up? auntie heather with her camera taking hundreds of pictures editing them to send to me so i can have them that's a friend and i am so thankful that i have this circle there's such a connection between them and i've laughed with them until my stomach hurt i've cried with them especially kelsey and joy like we've been through loss in our family together they've been there for me heather has been there for me through a lot of stuff i've been there for her and we also cheer each other on like I'm their biggest fan in their mind and the level of trust and vulnerability the level of trust that allows us just to be ourselves without judgment is what really does it for me I don't feel like I have to hide anything for them I don't feel like I have to not be me express who I am with them because I know that they just they just want to be around me and I just want to be around them it is what it is. And that's that's awesome. And each friend brings something unique to the table. Kelsey, she's my wise friend. She's like my voice of reason. She always has been. I'm the older cousin. I'm older than Kelsey. But Kelsey is my voice of reason. She will quickly reel me in and be like, Danielle, no. We're not going to do that today. Still, Kelsey could be in Korea. And she will reel me in from Korea. Joy is, she's like the ride or die, you know, like Joy will ride at dawn for real. I can call her at any hour. And if she hears that phone or if she sees it later, she's going to be there. That's Joy. And Heather is just honest and she's fun and she's loyal and she's funny. And they're just, they're just the best. And that's it. That's my circle. Now I do have other acquaintances. Yes, I do. Do I trust them with everything? Do I think they're like my, my, my friends really? Would I consider calling multiple people my friends now? No. No. These are my friends. These are my people. These three girls and my husband are my people. And that it's a life lesson learned. Keep your circle small. Thank you for listening today. And I hope that if you're going through this, that you know you're not alone. Keep your heart open to new connections. And just remember that it's nice to have a small circle. It's worth it. I, I promise it's worth it. 
Until next time, stay strong, stay resilient, and keep embracing the shifts.